Hi, this is Isaac Vascara, Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, and today I'd like to cover the topics of basic file management. One topic, how do users break their file references between their assemblies and their parts? Also, if those references are broken, what can you do to fix it? And how can you correctly rename files so its references are informed? Let's break references first, which can be caused by renaming a part, moving a part to a different folder, or revising a part and then not informing the assembly to point to the correct location. Broken references are an occurrence of working in the Windows Explorer. I have some parts that I'd like to work with, namely the body, the volume, and the neck. First, I'd like to break a reference by changing the name of the volume in the Windows Explorer. So I'll go to the volume, and I'll name it volume one. I'll open up the assembly, and notice that SOLIDWORKS informs me it's unable to locate the volume. Now I have a choice to either browse for the file or suppress the component. In this case, I'll suppress the component since I'm working with the large assembly. Usually when you're working with large assemblies, you just want to suppress the components unless you're absolutely sure you know where the file is located. Usually when you browse, when users browse for files, they can end up selecting the wrong component, putting that part into the assembly, and then cause even more trouble with their design. Now I'll demonstrate moving a part to a different folder. For example, let's move the body to a different folder. I'll close out the assembly. I'll create a new folder. I'll call it folder one. I'll select the body and drop it into folder one. And now when I go back into the assembly, tells me it's unable to locate the body and it's also unable to locate the volume. I'll suppress that as well. So now I have a useless assembly pretty much. The next thing I'd like to do is demonstrate copying a part to revise it and dropping it into a folder. So let me demonstrate. Let's do that with the neck. I'll save out the assembly. I'll close it out. And I'll create a new folder. And I'll call it folder two. I'll create a copy of the neck. Drop it into folder two. Paste it. And then I'll make a simple revision, such as just changing the color. So let's change the color to say candy apple red. I'll save that out. I'll close it. And when I open up the assembly, SOLIDWORKS tells me it's unable to locate the body and it's also unable to locate the volume. But it doesn't tell me anything about the neck. And the reason why it doesn't tell me anything about the neck is because it's still able to find the neck. But the error here is that it's pointing to the wrong version of the neck. The neck that I wanted it to point to was the neck in the folder two, which was the neck with the candy apple color. So you should be very aware of this because for your large assemblies, again, if you end up substituting in the wrong part, you may not know and you're gonna cause lots of errors to your design. So now that I've made this assembly pretty much useless. My last option is to, of course, browse for these files, which is, of course, a big risk do it, you're doing if you're dealing with large assemblies. But since I know where these parts are actually located, I'm going to go ahead and browse for the files. So I'll right click and I'll click on unsuppress. SOLIDWORKS asks me what I like to find the file myself. I'll click browse for the file. And I'll go to this folder. I'll substitute the body back in. And I'll do the same for the volume. I'll browse for the file. And I've renamed the volume to volume one. And that gets substituted back right in. So I could save this out. I can close out the file and one other thing, how do I know where my 
assembly file is pointing at. So I can go to file, open, and I can go to references. First, I need to actually click on the assembly first though, and then I can go to references. And then SOLIDWORKS gives me a list of all the references that the assembly is using. Now, if I'd like to actually swap in a different part, I can actually do that as well. So for example, the neck, if I double click on it, I can go to folder two and I could swap in this neck here. I can click okay. And now when I open up the assembly, a different color swapped in. One last thing, I can also swap in different parts by if I right click on the neck, I go to replace components, I can go to browse, and I can choose the other neck. And I'm back where I started. So this was a video on file management to show you how to avoid common pitfalls and how to be aware of them and also how to do correct file management methods. This is Isaac Vascara, your applications engineer with Hawkridge Systems. Thanks for watching.